Yo, 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 I'm Jacques Slade, and this is the Nike LeBron 9 Watch the Throne, an impossible retro that honestly, I never thought we'd see again. We'll talk about that impossible part a little bit later, but let's do a behind the scenes rundown of the sneaker. The Nike LeBron 9 Watch the Throne was at one point in time, the most elusive and exclusive pair of LeBron James signature shoes that were ever, ever made. A gift from Nike for Jay-Z and Kanye and by proxy LeBron James because, you know, it's his shoe after all. It was worn by the duo during their Miami stop of their tour on November 15, 2011. According to a Soul Collector retrospective in 2018, Nike's footwear and apparel design director, Eric Godo, who was a graphic designer for the swoosh at the time, said that the project came together rather quickly, a lot faster than the 18 month lead time you often hear it takes for a shoe to go from concept to reality. It's Kind of funny how timelines don't apply when you're making a gift for Hove and Ye. Anyways, the geometric print that you see on the shoe's inner lining consists of the state flowers of Jay, Kanye, and LeBron. So the rose represents New York, the violet was for Illinois, and the carnation was a symbol of Ohio. The gold piece was created by Gabriel Erst, whose spiky jeweled vibe was inspired by the Ricardo Tici designed album cover. It was made to look gaudy and opulent to the point where the whole arena could be dark and if someone flashed a picture, it would shine like nothing else on stage. According to longtime Nike LeBron design lead Jason Petrie, only three of these erst pieces were made and you can guess who they went to. That's why every time we've seen the Watch the Throne LeBron 9 in the years since the concert, whether it was Wale or Rich Paul or anyone, it did not come with the erst piece. It's honestly hard to understate what the Nike LeBron 9 Watch the Throne meant to the culture in 2011. By the same token, it's hard to understate what Watch the Throne meant to the culture in 2011. It wasn't the arrival of hip hop and sneakers to the mainstream because, well, it was already there in 2011. It was the elevation to something that Ye would describe in the song Otis as, well, luxury rap. Watch the Throne was the Hermes versus sophisticated ignorance. They were riding their curses in cursive. The LeBron 9 Watch the Throne was the sneaker equivalent of that. High fashion by that point was already starting to crib their style from streetwear and iconic sneaker silhouettes. This was the streets clapping back or embracing it depending on how you look at it, I guess. It was also the culmination of the symbiotic relationship between sneakers, basketball, and hip hop. What began with LL Cool J wearing the Air Jordan 1 on the back cover of his 1985 debut album to Run DMC rocking Adidas track suits and superstars because they were ideal for break dancing would lead to a movement that's actually still going on today. It was a spark that the brands were not totally aware of at the time. According to Adidas executive Angeli Anastasio, he would attend a Run DMC show in Madison Square Garden and leave in all as fans were rocking head to toe Adidas just like the group. He would sign Run DMC to a million dollar endorsement that he claimed helped Adidas sell more than a hundred million dollars worth of product over the next four years. Huh, something about that math just doesn't work for Run DMC or me for that matter. Now, you would think that the sneaker deals would come pouring in for the next big stars in hip hop as we headed into the 90s, right? Nope. Other than MC Hammer signing a deal with British Knights in 1990, it was a very dry period as sneaker brands opted to distance themselves from rap artists as the art of hip hop culture dived into deeper topics that addressed the systematic inequalities that was hampering and killing the black youth of America. Even Michael Jordan, the man, the legend, the goat, the guy whose sneakers we all wore had his eyes locked onto the quote game of basketball and his corporate image rather than quote keeping it real. That's what Spike Lee and those iconic black white commercials before. While the stars of the 90s lacked the official backing of the brands that they rocked and the money that went along with it, they still wore the sneakers that they thought were hot and the love for them, well, it only grew. It's why we revere pictures of Tupac wearing Grant Hill's second signature shoe with Fila or chase after the original Wu-Tang Dunks. We loved sneakers even when the people making them didn't want to acknowledge us. Wow, that got a little bit heavy, but Get what I'm trying to say. Now, that wall would all but break down by the late 90s and into the 2000s with hip hop culture becoming mainstream culture. It was something that brands could no longer deny. Nelly was rapping about Air Force Ones. Jay-Z and 50 Cent were signing endorsement deals and dropping signature shoes with Reebok and Allen Iverson became the people's champion. Unlike Jordan and the late Kobe Bryant who could rise above it all with their squeaky clean personas, AI embraced being the guy who had the swagger and scowl. Whatever was 
hot in the streets, you would see Iverson rocking it. Whether it was throwback jerseys or ultra baggy pants and do-rags. His time at the pinnacle of culture would be short-lived, but AI's influence lives on in the stars who followed in his footsteps and who have been able to chart a path that balances being true to the culture that made them and making inroads in the corporate world so that they can create a better future for those that come after him, like LeBron James. In 2002, while Allen Iverson was coming off his MVP season and rocking the A5s repped by Jadakiss, LeBron was a high school phenom putting together the building blocks of what would become his own dynasty. By the time he was in the league, he didn't look out of place anywhere, whether it was on the court where he was an all-star by his second season, in the sneaker game with the well-received debut in the Nike Zoom generation, or in the hip-hop world as he was posing with Jay-Z, Kanye West, and Foxy Brown on the cover of Double XL. He wasn't Michael Jordan. He wasn't Allen Iverson. He was the evolution of both, and the lessons he took from them and every star who came before was something he carried with him on a mostly spotless record, because there was the decision. But Without that stumble, we don't get what I would argue was the best LeBron James we ever saw. And that's not meant to be a hot take, but we don't give the Miami LeBron era enough credit for just how amazingly good he was during that time. Four years, four NBA final appearances, two championships. Yeah, you can nitpick things and get real reductive about those two chips, but I refuse to be a miserable fanboy in the comments section for this. And we certainly do not give the sneakers that he wore during that time enough credit in 2022. I mean, when he first arrived in Miami, the preheat Nike LeBron 8, eventually called South Beach, was an event. Back in those days, the only sneaker that caused that kind of fervor were the Air Jordan 11s and a handful of SB Dunks and Foam posits. And honestly, that's being really generous with Dunks and Foams. And that momentum would carry on for the next few years with the Nike LeBron 9 and the LeBron 10, the sneakers he would wear en route to his first two championships. So when we got word out and images started to leak of the Nike LeBron 9 watch the throne, it felt like a game changer. And as we would learn in the next decade, it was also the beginning of the end. So here's the thing. Nike doesn't need anybody's permission to retro the Nike LeBron 9 watch the throne. Sure, they need LeBron's blessing because his branding is on there. But if they were for some reason to cut him tomorrow, they could release this shoe without his branding on it and call it something like the Nike... King Nueve scanning the, the chair, whatever. Yeah, the gold lace lock here, by the way, is not a one-on-one -on -one creation of Gabriel Earth's piece, but I still feel like that was a sneaker that took a lot of strings to make happen. I mean, think about where the three significant parties of the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne are over a decade later. Jay-Z is the creative director of basketball at Puma, working mostly behind the scenes to bring in the next generation like LaMelo Ball while wearing GRs at his courtside Brooklyn Nets seats. Kanye West, aka Ye, left Nike under acrimonious circumstances and helped turn Adidas' fortunes around with his Yeezy brand. Well, if you listen to his stands, Kanye should own Adidas by now and should run everything, but whatever. Ye has done very, very well for himself in the sneaker and sandal world. And LeBron, well, Let's be honest, LeBron and Nike have made great signature shoes since the LeBron 7 through 10, but Braun and Jason Petrie have been chasing that dragon ever since. And my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers, well, they're hovering around 500, so that tells you how I feel. Thanks for the bubble chip, though, Braun. That being said, though, seeing a shoe like this that brought so many pieces of the world of sneakers, hip-hop, and basketball together in one silhouette just be treated like another release on the calendar and not the sort of reverence and admiration that it inspired during its original release, well, it's a bit of a wake-up call. On one hand, I realize the world of sneakers has changed and the way the larger community looks at them is different, but there still should be moments that we can all remember and not just let them pass as your ordinary sneaker release. It's almost like... It doesn't matter. In fact, it's almost like nothing really matters past the build up to the release date. There was a time when the joy of having a sneaker meant something and you enjoyed the moment and didn't look ahead to see what you could get next. And even for those that didn't get them right away, there was an acknowledgement and an understanding that they existed. It was for a lack of a better word, so cool. We were in fact happy for each other, which is why this shoe, the Nike LeBron 9 Watch the Throne is impossible. Even if Jay wasn't at Puma, even if Kanye wasn't at Adidas, and LeBron was a free agent, the moment that created these will never exist again. We don't look at sneakers the same way, we don't look at hip hop the same way, and we don't look at basketball the same way either. And the bigger question is, was that the peak?
This is the Nike LeBron 9 Watch the Throne Retro. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Also, if you want to see another unboxing video, make sure you click right here because I have one right there. And I did this special video with a special product from Giannis and JBL. So click over there if you want to check that out. As always, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Peace.